Hey guys, back again with another um, book tag. Uh, right now, I thought that I could do the 20 questions book tag, which I believe was started by either Madam Writer or Sophro Reeves. Um, I'm not. 100% certain, but I'm just guessing because those are the ones that I found. Um, all right, so let's just get into this uh, questions book tag. So the first question is, how many books are too many in a series? Um, I honestly, oof, that's a tough one. Um, I think that if it gets into like the teens or something like that, that's probably enough books in a series. Um, if it's anything more than that, I mean, I do plan on reading the entirety of Discworld and I think that's somewhere in the 30s or 40s of a series. Um, so maybe that would be an exception, but usually um, if a series extends longer than that, that's pretty daunting um honestly that's something that's made me hesitate getting a hold of uh certain uh manga volumes just because the series extends so long um and I just don't think I have the room or the money to you know invest in something that's 60 to 70 uh or more volumes but um so yeah I guess it depends but um I would prefer series that didn't extend 20 I guess uh next question is how do you feel about cliffhangers I absolutely hate 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 cliffhangers um this is what causes me um to end up buying the second and third books in the series if I really enjoyed the first one, um, because I know that if the cliffhanger at the end of the first book was bad enough, the cliffhanger on the second book is going to piss me the fuck off. So, um, yeah, I just, I really don't enjoy, uh, cliffhangers because then I'm going to be thinking about that book and all the possibilities until I eventually either get my hands on it or the author writes a new one. So. Uh, number three is hard copy or paperback. Um, I honestly don't really have that much of a preference. Um, I think you'll note on this shelf behind me, um, currently the majority of these are all of my paperbacks. Um, I only have a few hardbacks right here because they're ones that I borrowed from people. Um, but my other pack, um, hardbacks have been um just sleeved <laughs> or decovered or whatever. Um their dust jackets off and I have them set up on another bookshelf. So that is where they currently live. And um I definitely have more uh more paperbacks I guess than I do hardbacks. But it's not really a preference, I guess. It's just um more what I found that was available at the time or most often what ended up being cheaper. Um, I mean, I read a lot and I don't really care if something is like extra special most of the time. I'm gonna pay the cheapest amount for it probably um, just because I want to be able to afford more books. Uh, what is favorite book? Um, I have a hard time answering that one just because I have so many books that I would consider to be among my favorites that if I were to try to list them off, it would probably um, make this video last about half an hour. I just, I have way too many books that I consider favorites. Uh, least favorite book. Oof, that one's a list too. Um, 
there are a lot of books that I really do not like. Um, off the top of my head, I could say um, Julie and Julia by Julie Powell, um, anything by Willa Katha, Cather or um, Faulkner. Um, I really don't like um, a lot of uh, Twilight or um, a lot of the more popular fantasy-ish things in um, the past, like, decade or so. I'm just not, I just don't really like them. I don't enjoy them. They're not for me. Um, or maybe I didn't have a good time reading them. And that's the list, too. Uh, next question is love triangles, yes or no? Um, I think if a love triangle is done correctly, um, if it's handled well, then it's all right. Um, as long as it's helping there be like character growth or moving the plot forward, that's that's fine. Um, if it's just there because that's a trope that everyone has to have in books nowadays, um, I'm very much over it. I'm just incredibly over it. Number seven, the most recent book you just couldn't finish. Um, the last book that I DNF'd was actually um, back in January, I think, or maybe February. Um, it's The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. Um, I did want to read that book. I was sad that I could not finish it, but unfortunately, um, it was just not good for me mentally. Um, it was kind of, I don't know, setting off something in my anxiety. So I just could not finish reading it and I um, put it aside to return to my aunt. So uh, let me see. Number eight. A book you are currently reading. Um, I'm in the middle of several books, um, but the one that I most recently just picked up today, actually, is uh, Death Without Company by Craig Johnson. This is book two in the Longmire series. And I have a few of these mysteries on hand, so I'm pretty excited to be getting into them. I'm actually going to read this after I'm finished filming this. <laughs> Um, number nine, what is the last book that you recommended to someone? Um, the last book that I recommended, well, I finished reading, okay, there's two parts to that one, because if we're talking not specific, um, I finished reading, uh, They Called Us Enemy by George Takei. I finished that um, earlier today and it was a very like uh, moving experience and in my review recommended to everyone I think everyone um, that is a story that everyone should read um, as far as to a specific person I think the last book I recommended um, to someone was truly devious um, I recommend mysteries and since that one takes place at um a private academy in vermont i thought that she might get a kick out of it and might enjoy it but i wasn't too sure if it was going to be her cup of tea um but she ended up really loving it so that's cool uh number 10 the oldest book that you have read um so i'm not fully certain of the exact date um, because I did take a mythology class um, at some point in college and we ended up reading um, a couple of things. We read the Iliad, um, we read Antigone, I believe, or the Sis Sisyphean, the Sisyphean plays, uh, something like, I don't know, it was an experience. Um, but I can say that I've also recently uh, reread The Odyssey as well. Um, I'm not really sure which one comes first. I mean, I know that the Iliad is kind of like book one, and this is technically book two, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm not really entirely certain which one comes first. 
Um, I also read the Tao Te Ching. Don't know if that one comes first either. I don't know. Um, I read some ancient stuff. So we'll just leave it at. There's been some ancient things I read, and we'll just. They're all old. Um, <laughs> question eleven: The newest book you've read. Um, I guess technically the newest one I read was The Hand on the Wall. Um, I read this um, right after I got it in the mail, actually. Um, back in, oh, when did this come out? February? March? I don't remember. Anyway, um, this is a pretty recent uh, book that came out, and yeah, read it pretty recently. Who is your favorite author? Oh, I actually made a video about that. Um, my top 10 favorite authors. So I will try to figure out how to link that somewhere or add the video or however they do this crap. I'll, I'll put it, I'll link it to this video anyway. So you can see. <laughs> uh, number 13, buying books or borrowing books? Um, I like doing both. Um, if it's something that I'm fairly certain I'm going to enjoy, uh, or it's, you know, a continuing of a series and, and whatnot, or it's a book that I've been wanting desperately to read, um, then I am perfectly okay with buying it. Um, secondhand shops, I really like to peruse through and find awesome stuff. So I, you know, I don't mind buying books. Um, I do like borrowing though. Um, I love libraries and I also tend to borrow a lot of books from uh, family and friends. So um, that honestly is more helpful if it's a book that I'm not sure I'm going to like. If it's an author I haven't really heard of um, or it's maybe a genre that I'm not entirely uh, sold on but I want to try it out, then, uh, yeah, I'd rather, so it's, I, I guess it's maybe a mix of both of those. Uh, number 14, a book you dislike that everyone seems to like. Um, feel like I might have answered this on something else, but, um, there's a couple of books, um, they're older, uh, ones that everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but um for the large part a lot of a lot of people that I see on like um booktube or just life um people seem to like uh first of all Jane Eyre um I had to read that in high school and when I say I had to read it I mean it just was not a great experience um there was a portion of uh, one summer that I will never get back. Um, and then other than that, um, I also had to read Great Gatsby for a class and the time period I love. Um, I'm very interested in, um, in that time period because it's, uh, fascinating, but that book was the bane of my existence. And, um, even when the movie came out and there seemed to be like a resurgence of people just over the moon for it. Um, I just was not impressed. Um, I did watch the movie, but I have to say the only good thing about it was the music. Um, everything else was just the same as the book. It's terrible and it's full of terrible people. Um, number 15. Bookmarks or dog ears? Um, I use bookmarks um, for all the books that I read and see um i do dog ear my pages i do have to say i do do that um but that is for later um because uh when i'm reading if i see like a couple of lines or something that i think is funny or really hit me in a special um, maybe on a page and then um later on maybe when i finish the book or whatever i will go back um, into a notebook that I have, and I will write down that quote, so I'll remember it, um, but yeah, I don't do that to save my place or anything, I use actual bookmarks for that. 
Uh, number 16, what is a book that you can always read? Um, I have a lot of books that I reread a lot. Uh, but one that I think I've read a lot in the past couple of years, or reread a lot, has been, um, has been Nora Roberts' books. Um, especially this series, which is the Three Sisters Island trilogy. Um, I like the first book, especially Dance Upon the Air. Um, so this one I have reread a lot. Uh, number 18, or no, 17, excuse me. Can you read while hearing music? Um, it depends on the music. I can't listen to most music and focus on my reading. Um, if it's like that, there's a um, playlist on Spotify that's like lo-fi hip-hop beats or something like that for like studying or reading. Um, I can listen to that most of the time. Um, or jazz. Um, I'm okay with listening to that while I'm reading, um, but most of the time I just kind of read in quiet or the natural sounds around me. Um, occasionally I'll put on like an ASMR, like nature sounds or like, you know, Harry Potter themed ones or something like that so I can just have something in the background if there's other noises that are annoying like a TV on or something. But depends on the music. Uh, number 18, one point of view or multiple point of view? I would usually prefer one point of view. Um, I can deal with multiple points of view, but usually I don't like those to exceed maybe like two or three people. If it gets more than that, it's just way too much and it's confusing and it bounces back and forth and I just can't keep track. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, question 19. Do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Uh, it depends on the book. Today I read, um, I read They Called Us Enemy. I read that in one sitting. Um, and it's a graphic novel and it was also like this thick. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, I guess it really depends on the length of the book or maybe the quantity or the cup, not really quantity, the content. Um, Cause sometimes if it, even if it's a thinner book, but the subject is like heavy or it's not really holding my interest that I have to spread out over multiple days. Um, but if it's really fascinating or um, not that long, yeah, I'll usually read that in one sitting. And the last question, number 20, is one book you read because of the cover. Um, so I never really read a book just because of the cover. Um, I have to say the cover might attract me to the book, um, but I will only decide to read it after I have um, read the synopsis. Um, that's the deciding factor. Um, so one I can say um, that I was interested in the cover was Anna Dressed in Blood. Um, this kind of drew me in. The name creeped me out and made me want to know more. And this looked spooky and kooky and crazy. But I didn't decide to actually purchase this or read it until I actually read the back. Because I just don't operate like that. Even if the cover looks cool. Um, sometimes the synopsis is going to be something that is not what I want. So, yeah. All right, guys, that is the 20 questions um, book tag. It has gotten really dark and stormy outside. That's great. Um, I hope that it's not crappy near you and um, that all of you are staying well. And uh, I'm going to get back to reading. Enjoy, guys. Bye.